we're doing here is uh, we're getting ready to show you guys how to make this corner go around the bird box because you're going to have to do a, a notch and everything and carry your angle over. Uh, I just snapped these lines. I've made a video about it. I'll put a link in the description why I do it. Um, I use I use my speed square here. Every every corner is different, but uh, I use my speed square here to kind of try to determine uh, what this flange sits at when it's sitting on a wall perfectly square. Right, I'm using the this square to represent a wall right here, and it lands right about at three and three quarter. Okay. Um, so, oh, I forgot you already cut this boy up. All right, well, I'm just gonna show you guys the process and things already got pencil marks on it and stuff. Where'd that rack? Oh, here we go. Um, hook blade for many uses. I'm gonna show you guys how to clean up these marks here. There's something, there's something on here. I don't know what it is, but we can't be putting up a corner with marks on it like that. So, this here is like acetone, mineral spirits. You don't want to do too much of this. You don't want to do this on like painted siding. Like you can try a little bit, maybe on like a, a piece that's not installed because this can cause a paint transfer and ruin your piece. But you see it just took that off right there. It wouldn't, I couldn't get it off with uh, my fingernail or rubbing it or anything. So yeah, again, you just don't want to, you want to make sure that this thing doesn't transfer the paint or leave a mark that's going to change the color of the siding. So like, I wouldn't use it unless it's something that you just are not getting out. So first things first, you want to measure. So the, the rule is, at least on my crew, we, we like to keep our corner posts about an inch, a three quarters or an inch below the starter. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. The, the way that I found that is the most accurate to not screw these up and, and try to pull numbers from a bunch of different angles is we just go right here to this soffit, this F channel here, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, F channel and fascia where that connects, and get a reed down to your starter. It's about 91 and a quarter. Just add an inch to that. So we're gonna go 92 and a quarter, all right? And that's gonna get us right up to that point. So then from that point, we gotta know our next number, and you're gonna wanna get uh, real up close to be able to read this number accurately. I've got three and an eighth. So I had 92 and a quarter, three and one eighth. All right, now that three and one eighth represents the distance before we start our angle, which is roughly like a, they probably tried for a 412, it's like three and a half. All right, so we're gonna put like a three and a half 12 pitch on it. And then the only other variable here is going to be, we're gonna have to notch this. So there's really no good way to know exactly with a tape measure what that's going to be. Grab me that, grab me a scrap piece of corner right there, please. So there's really no good way to know that. I happen to know that it's usually about an inch, right? I've done a bunch of these corners on this house, fresh in my mind. I know that it's been about an inch on every one and every other job that I've done. So what we do is, it's a good reason to have these lines snap too. Not that they're going to be perfect, um, but gives you a rough idea of where your corner is going to sit exactly when you make this mark, okay? So now we're just making a mark here. Once I halfway like it, okay? And that's that's where we're going up, okay? It looks to be about an inch. And then the other thing you gotta be careful with is sometimes these bird box can get a little curved. If someone pulls too far in when they nail this on, uh, or if it's sitting too far out because you didn't put a nail here. So um, this one's short, but if you look right here, come check out like one of these. Like you can, you can see on this one, I had to mimic the curve on it. Okay, it was much bigger, it was around seven inches, and I had to put a little bit of a curve on that to make it sit correctly, okay? So we've now got a mark here, right? We can measure that, see what it is. It's an inch and an eighth, okay? So now we can pull up from our side. Now, I don't know how this pencil mark got here. Again, I, I wish I knew that this corner was cut before I started, but this side is uncut. So typically uh, I pull all my numbers from the same side. That way there's a fresh cut on the bottom because that stuff obviously is gonna need a cut. So there's no sense in having a cut up top and an ugly, corner, or ugly cut down at the bottom, all right? So let me see if I can get that pencil mark off so I can do this thing the right way. Get a bunch on here. 
okay? Took it like right off. All right, so now this is gonna be my bottom side. Always do it in a way that isn't gonna get you turned around. All right, so this is my bottom. We're gonna pull our 92 and a quarter. 92 and a quarter. Okay, now that is going to be, again, where that fascia is, which is gonna be uh, completely square on this side. All right, and then we had our one inch and one eighth right here. Okay, and then you can just continue that all the way through. Okay, but at some point, we're gonna have to start that angle, which is three and one eighth, I believe. Oh, this tape's crooked, we'll see how this goes. But that's where the angle starts. So now we can go like this, get our three and a half 12, you know, scoot it down until uh, you're looking right here until we reach that mark. And it's right there. Let's make sure we're right, about three and a half 12, and give that a little mark, okay? So this is all coming out, that's all coming out, and that's all coming out. So let's put a cut on it. We got a grinder here. And then if you want, you can clean up any edges you think are rough with uh, some snips, okay? So let's throw this up there. Uh, this wall is, again, really, really crooked. So I'm anticipating that it's not going to be perfectly on the lines, but it's good. It's still good to have the lines. You don't have to do it. We've set a couple of these without the lines. That's the way most people do it. But I do like having a line there because if it... If it's not perfect, then you can, uh, you know, look through the flange or what have you, whatever makes that work, okay? So, let's get this thing decently close. And see, that's not that bad. The only thing is at that bottom, that nail right there, it looks like it kind of sucked that fascia in. I'm not sure if uh, Boyko was getting a close up on that or not. So I can take this, try to get that out a little bit see if it looks any better if not it really wasn't that bad to begin with to be honest so I think it was plenty good good enough for who it's for good enough for my house which I'm actually thinking about buying this but it's probably not gonna happen let's be, let's be real I can't can't get a oh see and this is another good reason that we put the uh, got a bunch of stuff in my put the extra inch on there because I am about an eighth strong short of touching right there. Okay, so I'm gonna trim a little bit more off. And all I gotta do is trim it off this angle, which will raise this whole thing up. shower all right so you're gonna want to put uh, a nail I'm sure if you can see right at the top of that flange hole and that will keep it from being able to come down okay and I did not slam that home like everybody thinks like all the way most people do I mean it's okay in my opinion to put your corner posts on decently tight I mean I'm not 
indenting the flange by any means, but I'm not leaving it out like that, kind of like the uh, like certain teeth instructional videos and stuff go. So I don't know anybody that ever has. Let me take your uh, snips real quick. I forgot one thing. So I'm glad I forgot it. So that shows you guys why. Okay. So if we put a piece of siding on, so I don't have laying around, that siding is going to go with this starter, right? And it's uh, this flange will be showing. So if I come right there, you just go to that first crease inside of there. You don't want to go all the way to the back. And then and then uh, come down this, it's gonna look a lot cleaner. Uh, I really might need to take this thing off to get a good cut on it. Let's see what I can do. It's just too low to the ground. Well, you can score it with a knife too, I guess, if you're gonna be stupid like me. see that that looks a lot cleaner okay and typically you want to keep your starter short of your corner be, uh, because of what you see is happening here it's not a big deal I mean if it ran all the way in there that'd be an issue you wouldn't be able to get your thing in right but you see we're on our line right there it's just a little bit so I'm gonna put it actually I'm not gonna tap this yet until I get this one done it's not that quick So I'm going to, before I nail this fully, I'm going to eyeball it on this line and make sure it looks good. It actually does look pretty decent. So I'm going to put that in, get a good look at this as we go up. Yeah, that line looks great all the way. There's a couple different ways you can pull that line. If you, uh, how would that happen? If you use your tape measure and just try to pull from the corner, you have to make sure you pull from where the center of the corner would be. So that can get a little, you know, you can get off if you don't, you know, if, if you have like two pieces of plywood that don't fully touch or something like that. I actually just discovered that using a framing square really helps do it and it's got marks on there for you. So to keep it square, it'll have your exact point of your corner represented already. And you can make your marks on it. The reason I didn't use it on this is because we've got this bowed out wood I already told you guys about. At least if I include this in the video on how to do this garage here. And uh, it would have thrown it all catty wampus. I know you love that word ever since Ronald Rab's house. to sit here finagling it you know hey boy call both a look we didn't have to mess with all that so um uh, here's just a quick nice video for you guys on how to get this bird box angle thank you <laughs> 